Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Spotlight. I am Crystal Lampett and I'm very pleased to have a bunch of people from Kansas City in here tonight. We've got Victor and Penny and the Loose Change Orchestra. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you for being here. Now, I do want to point out, Victor and Penny, it's actually Jeff and Aaron. That's right. Yes. But we like the name Victor and Penny because... It just sounds nice, doesn't just it? Sound, yeah. It's just got a nice <laughs> ring to it and it yeah. just stuck. You guys have, you yeah. know, kind of carried it on through the years and it's... Got a nice ring to it. We're yeah. gonna kick off the show with uh, wake up or wake up early. Wake up early. Yeah. And this is on your newest album. Yeah. This right. Our, our brand okay. new album. Yeah. So Victor and Penny, everyone, and the Loose Change Orchestra. Wake Up Early by Victor and Penny, and you guys are actually Jeff and Aaron. That's right. Um, but we do we do like the name Victor and Penny, and I know you, you kind of told me earlier that it was something that just sort of organically came about, but tell us a little bit more about the origins of the name. Well, we were doing a play here in Kansas City, uh, a new play, um, and we hired Jeff, I was producing it and, and also acting in it, and we hired Jeff to come down from Chicago and be the music director and co-write some material. And where was this happening at? It was at what is now the Living Room Theater. It was one of right. their very, very first productions mm -hmm. in that space after mm -hmm. they took over. Um, and so uh, the character that he played, the band, the band all played a character, so they were on stage the whole time, so we decided to give them names. And uh, they were a band of hitmen. So we na his name was Victor California and the Dead Ringers. Mm -hmm. And we just loved that name, Victor California. So we started doing a couple gigs together. We decided to kind of cross promote and work with that name. So we picked Penny for me, um, and we picked Penny, Penny Arcadia from Penny Arcade, like uh, Paper Moon, the song. Oh. It's a melody played on a Penny Arcade. Okay. So I'm Penny Arcadia and he's Victor California. We just thought that was kind of fun. I don't think we ever intended that this would be the forever band name of yeah, it just kind of stuck, like band names do. Yeah. And, and I think we decided early on, too, we weren't really going to portray characters no. on stage. It was just going to be kind you of... You are not characters. You yeah. are. You're just Victor and Penny. And yeah. also, 
to add to that, you're you're now married. Yeah, that's right. So we congratulations. Well, thank, you. thank you. That just happened. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah. Um, but how, how long have you guys known each other? Oh, well, is that yeah. a trick question? Yeah, yeah. long time. Long we time. we yeah. knew each other. Our rock bands played together in college. But we, That's so cool. yeah, we played, I think our bands, I went back and looked, I think our bands played together like 12 times. Um, mm -hmm. So we had all our friends in common and we had all of our experiences in common, but he and I were really not friends. Like, not, not friends, we just, we were acquaintances. Yeah, we weren't adversaries. No, we weren't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. We just didn't, we didn't hang out, like we don't. Um, I love it don't. though, because a few years later, you did obviously leave an impression on him and we're gonna get more into that here in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere, guys. I'm gonna tell you the victor in Penny Love Star. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. We've got Victor and Penny here, um, Aaron and Jeff, actually. So I want to know the rest of the love story. How did it go from being kind of just acquaintances, collaborating, to suddenly a romantic interest? Yeah. Well, so uh, I was up working in Chicago um, a number of years ago, seven, eight, eight years ago, I guess. And Jeff had been living up there for a long time. Um, and uh, Facebook was pretty new, or I was new to Facebook at that time. And Facebook used to say, you might know this person when it would try to help you find friends. And uh, his name came up in my feed, and I totally remembered him from mm -hmm. these bands back here in Kansas City all those years ago. And um, I knew that he knew a mutual friend, so I wrote him on Facebook and said, hey, I'm Erin McGrain from Kansas City. You probably don't remember me, but I was in Blue Museum. And I remembered her. You definitely remembered, remembered her. her. What did you What did you remem remember about her that struck you? Um, I just I just remember her. Um, you know, I remember her band, of course, Blue Museum, mm -hmm. that used to play with with my band a lot. And then um, after she sent me that first message, you know, I started kind of snooping around on Facebook and looking at pictures and stuff and seeing what she was up to. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm the green. She's kind of left yeah. a good impression on you. Yeah. Got so, a good vibe. Yeah. So yeah. he said, well, I'm I'm in Blue Man Group and I'm in this band. And do you want to go? And I'm like. Of course. Yeah. So, Who says no to that? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so the first time I, I went to see you play, I, he actually had a date that night. He says it's not a date, but I'll tell you the girl, the girl thought it was a date, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was a date. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, you know, there wasn't anything going on at first, but then we just, um, I was just continuing to work up in Chicago, and you were there, and we started doing some music together. So mm -hmm. we said, let's do a musical thing together. This will be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And out of that just kind of sprang Everything, yeah. yeah. Everything, it just organically yeah, it kind just of happened developed. over over yeah. quite some time because we were in two it cities like it, for right. four years. You were long distance, so yeah. and the crazy yeah. thing is, you left Blue Man Group mm -hmm. to come to Kansas City mm -hmm. to be with this lovely lady. I did. Um, yeah. Tell us about that decision. Well, I'd been there for eleven years, and it was a fantastic job. It was like every musician in Chicago wanted to have that job, and mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to to work there and met some great people and. Uh, Blue Man had, Group, you mean? Yeah, in Blue Man Group, and yeah. had great experiences. And uh, I guess after 11 years, and then also, you know, just kind of missing my family. And then after we mm. started getting acquainted, and you know, she was back here in Kansas City, it just it felt like the right time to to make a make a change. And, well, I can sense that Chicago has a very special place in both of your hearts. Was there ever, mm -hmm. did you ever think about setting up shop there and sure. being based out of Chicago? Yeah, absolutely. That was because I really wanted to move to Chicago. So mm -hmm. I was working in two cities for um, about six years and had an apartment up there and in Kansas wow. City. So was going back and forth and back and forth. And um, I was kind of thinking about moving up there, but you were really wanting to move back to Kansas City. I was City. ready to come back, yeah. And yeah. it kind of hinged on a conversation we had at New Year's Eve, like 2010, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we'd been playing out a little bit together as Victor and Penny. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. People seemed sort of interested in what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we had this conversation like, well, what do you want to do, you know, when you're grown up? <laughs> yeah. And he said, I want to go on tour. Or I want a tour. And I said, I want a tour also. Like, both of us had been in bands that had gone on tour and been on tours. Okay. But being a touring band is a different thing. Okay, tell us the difference. Explain. Well, Going on tours at a week or two yeah, weeks. Yeah, I think the difference between just going out on the weekends and coming back yeah. to your day job during the week. Okay. And what we wanted to do is like what we ended up doing a couple of years after that is being on the road for eight weeks straight or six weeks yeah. straight or things like that. So at our first year we were out, I think, 90 days and then like 160 days. And then the next year we were out 205 days on the road. So by touring band, wow. I mean, we're, we're literally living on the road. We gave yeah. up our apartments and, mm -hmm. and everything. And wow. we, we just really wanted to have that experience and we felt like if not now, when, 
you know, what are we, what, what are you what waiting, are we waiting for? for? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, so it took us about a year to prepare for that. And part of that was him moving back to Chicago. And then it made, it made sense to base out of Kansas City, which is in the middle of everything. It's, in the middle of everything. it's where our community is. We feel deeply um, invested in the art scene that's going on here and also the renaissance that's happening here. And we just wanted to make sure we were still part of all of that. Mm -hmm. So here, here made perfect sense, sense, and it was the total right decision. Well, when you guys were on tour, though, because I know that that can be such an exhausting experience. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what that did for you as, you know, as, as a couple, as a band, as musicians. What changed, and how did your music change from that experience of traveling, living on the road? I mean, I, I can... Uh, I would assume it was a pretty hectic oh, yeah. life there. Yeah, yeah, it was. We, it was a big learning curve for both of us. Neither of us had done that before. The, the great thing about traveling like that together is we we kind of kind of joke, but we're kind of serious about like we had a lot of time in the car together to like work oh, yeah. out our stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? We worked <laughs> out our stuff. You know, and we, so it was almost like therapy. Did, kind of, yeah. But you know, we did. But we 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 found that we could we could travel like that very effortlessly. You it's know, a good test. Yeah, yeah it was. and then on the other hand, just playing every night, you just get better. Just get we just really tight. Playing together, you know, we just we mm. we became kind of one unit, you know, after mm. touring all those years. Yeah, you just get better really, really <clears> fast, <throat> and we kind of developed our own language. Like we, you know, musically, we, I, I, I feel like we can just understand what each other is doing and saying mm -hmm. on stage, even if we're not singing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it was great. Well, you know, we've gone as of right now about two hundred thousand miles through thirty nine states. Wow. That's a lot of time in the car together and a lot of challenges. I mean, everything. We had to replace the tires, all four tires one time. Where was that? Stanley, Idaho? or I don't know, yeah. That's a fun, unexpected experience. Oh, huh? my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. there's been lots of challenges. So we also learned how each other deals with stress. And That's problems. super important. And how do you deal with stress? Um, um, as calmly as possible, really. Yeah. I mean, it's the only option when you're, when you're out like that. You know? mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of drama in terms of your no. dynamic? No. No, we worked it That's out. Good. I mean, we're really, I'm not sure everybody could would would want to yeah. live and work and yeah. make music and yeah. create art with their spouse or their partner but it, it works really really well for us and has continued to be enjoyable probably because we're a little bit older too so mm -hmm. we kind of know who we are sure yeah, yeah you've established that do you think that that dynamic uh comes across when you guys are on stage do you feel like your your audience connects with that that you are a couple you are intimately involved but you're also yeah. performers i mean you you are so connected yeah, yeah. you're very close People tell us that, yeah. that, they, that they love that. And yeah. so, some people were saying, oh, we knew this long ago that you guys were gonna <laughs> together, you know. <laughs> um, people tell us that all the time, that they, they love that energy and that con uh, connectivity that happens between us. And when we play as the duo, as opposed to playing with a full band mm -hmm. like we did on the show, mm -hmm. um, you can, that really comes out because there's no other distraction. You can really see that kind of push and pull and that tight, tight row backed. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of our fans, when we when we announced that we got married, they're like, "Oh, I thought you were already married." Thought you were already married. Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> was it no big news to them? You know? Or it was an act. Oh, we thought it was a total an yeah, act. Yeah. You know, it's like one no or the other. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. So tell me about the proposal and the wedding. All the ladies want to know about this. Yeah, mm. yeah. The proposal was awesome. I was totally surprised. Which people say you could surely not, but no, really, truly, we've both been married before, um, and so I don't think either of us felt any push rush. or need or rush. Sure. Uh, to get remarried and it feels different approaching it the second time so it wasn't like I was expecting it or we hadn't been talking about it or planning it. Yeah. It was right before Christmas and we decided to take a day off boogie actually on a yeah. Tuesday mm -hmm. yeah. and we were going to go see the matinee of Star Wars mm -hmm. and then out for dinner mm -hmm. and um, stay overnight at Hotel Phillips which was going to be That's our little Christmas nice. present. Yep. That was going to be our This is before she knew anything of course. I mean, wow, I, I, I so literally... you've been planning this. Fish? Not really. Oh. It, it's interesting because okay. um, you know her birthday was in July. I thought about doing it then, but I passed on that. And then I thought, oh, maybe Christmas or maybe New Year's would be. And then I like literally woke up one morning. It was December twentieth. I remember it. It was a Tuesday, and I thought, I I'm going to do it today. Huh. Today's the day. I wonder and what so, that was. Um, I don't know. It just felt so like it just felt right. Yeah, it felt <laughs> like that was the time to do it. And she had some appointments that morning, so I went and dropped her off and then drove around and got a card and got some other things. But I, I wrote a blog post on our website about this, about the whole, all the ins and outs of that day, because he, I had no idea what was going on. I'm just at my uh, meetings in the morning, and he was going to come back and pick me up with car share. And, but when he picked me up, he was kind of sweaty and the car smelled like <laughs> vanilla. And I was like, vanilla? Yeah, and that's what I said. I said, weird, why the car smells so sweet? It smells so good. He was like, mm. Mm. 
don't know. <laughs> you're like, a bad liar too, right? Yeah. So you're like sweating. Yeah. Oh, there's something's going on. Like, you know, yeah. so we went back to our apartment to get our stuff together. And I'm just in the kitchen, blah, 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 blah talking about all the things we're going, going to do to today. Yeah. yeah, and then I look up and he hands me a card. And I thought, oh, that's sweet. It's what kind of thoughtful. our Christmas date. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, and I open the card, and as I'm reading the card, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's happening? And then you went in the other room, and you came back, and you had a ring, and, yeah. and just Aww. said, Aaron, will you marry me? And I just, I mean, I, <laughs> all the tears, all the tears. I was so surprised. It was just really um, perfect. It was perfect, and it was just right there in our, our kitchen. It felt very real. And very in the real. wedding, that, that carried th through all the mm -hmm. way to the, the wedding. wedding. I saw the wedding pictures. They were beautiful. Thank you. There's more coming. I'm just, yeah. It takes so long to get yeah. through all these things. But yeah, um, but yeah I, I, it's just very, very real. It feels, um, I don't know, I guess that's the gift of maybe getting a do-over, is that yeah. you get a chance to just really be present in it and come at it from... Um, just a very meaningful point of view, yeah. uh, uh, by choice. Just, you know, there's no other reason to do this other than we just really. And I, I did, I was looking at some of those photos and you, you do write on your blog on victorandpenny.com. Yes, right? yeah. Um, so I did notice that there was a, a really sweet little quote from the Velveteen Rabbit yeah. when you were writing about your wedding. And I'm curious why that book is special to you guys. Well, I would say it's probably, it's really my, my blog. Yeah. Um, to me, I guess it's because that idea of, of becoming real and that um, you take a lot of uh, bumps and scratches and bruises and you get your little fur all worn off, but you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> by the time you get to that point, you know what it means to actually be present and be real. And that's a big part of everything that we try to do is just be present and, and real in our lives. And that comes a lot from my mom too, who passed away. Um, 15 years ago and you know before I, I was still young then and I asked her I said is there anything that you can tell me before you go yeah. um, and she said the only thing that I can tell you the only thing I've learned is that life is incredibly short and you have to stop waiting to do the things that you want to do you never have enough time you never have enough money you're not going to get a sign that says today is the day and it's all going to work out perfectly um, you just have to you have to try Roll with the punches. Yeah, so life is short, live it now. So that's yes. part of that too, just being real, being right here in the moment. That's, a, that's an amazing lesson from mom. <laughs> I love it. Thank you guys yeah. so much for sharing your story. And we do have one more song from these guys. Stick around. Wake up early. Wake up early and get me going. Wake up early and get me rolling. Find the light, turn it on. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. I'm here with Victor and Penny and the Loose Change Orchestra, and you guys are getting a sneak peek at some of their newest material that has not come out yet. Uh, the last song we have is called She Says She Knows, mm -hmm. and the interesting thing about this song is that it's sort of inspired by a character that you performed at one point. Right, I uh, played a character called Ruby Falls that I created for about 10 years, and she was this great character that um, people loved and felt like they knew her, but there was always something else going on underneath. So uh, she's the kind of girl you don't want to fall in love with. She's kind of like, sneaky. Well, you might, you, might, you might lose your heart to her. You might get <laughs> hurt. There, there might be more there than you, than you bargained for. I like it. I like yeah. this mysterious character. <laughs> and we do want to make sure to remind you guys to follow Victor and Penny on Instagram, um, victorandpenny.com, yep. and where can we find your music? Uh, well, I just at Victor and Penny is our handle for, twi yep. for Twitter and yep. Instagram, and you can find it on um, you know all the yeah, iTunes, all the things, all the things, all the things. Yes. All the yeah. things. Yep. Make sure you guys do that. Spotify and all that. All right, this is she says she knows. Take it away, guys. She's fingerprints left upon the glass She's riddling you with her invisibility Knowing things you never think to ask Ooh, she says She's slipping through the grass Fooling you with every opportunity 
opportunity You should have known Oh, bad you'd never be her last Ooh, she says Oh, 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 she knows Ooh, she says She knows Oh, 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 She's a brutal.